Okay, so yes, talking about the metaverse, investing in the metaverse and proposing an index, I think, first of all, none of this is investment advice. Of course, this is just an informational uh, presentation. First question we need to ask yourself is, what is the metaverse and what are we talking about here? Because there's a lot of different ideas floating around. The metaverse can be a game on Sandbox, it can be a JP Morgan experience in Decentraland, it can be a concert in Fortnite, which is then more centralized. Everybody thinks of meta and meta horizon worlds. I think a fair definition to, to go with is that it's an interoperable network of persistent virtual worlds with their own economy and identification system within them. I think that's something we can maybe uh, use as a basis for the rest of this presentation. Who's building this metaverse today? We know there are over 500 companies working on it. Um, at least half of them are decentralized. You have metaverse gateways, games, which is like a big part of it, um, user interface and immersion, so really the tech behind it, um, digital twins, NFTs also fall under this. So there's a lot of work being put into this idea of, of the metaverse. Um, and the reason it's interesting is because if we take a step back and we look at the internet, the internet as we know it brought massive change to uh, a couple of the areas in our daily lives. So the way we learn, the way we communicate, the way we entertain ourselves, the way we shop, right? So Zoom, Instagram, Netflix, Amazon, you can pretty much all name them by yourself. Um, and I think it's foolish to think that this is the last stage of evolution in these areas. Technology will push on, so what's the next step? And this is where we see the metaverse in Web3 emerging. So in education, we're really talking about the classroom of the future. I know this is a hybrid conference, but I'm pretty sure it's hard to keep the people sitting in front of their screens engaged right now. So that's something that more immersive tech will solve. Communication, right? A new stage of social media, virtual group activities, virtual status symbols that you start buying, improved remote work as well, entertainment. So we're talking about gaming. There's over 3 billion gamers in the world, right? So gaming and the metaverse can be a huge driver for adoption. And then retail experiences, Web3 online shopping, the return of the brick and mortar store in a virtual fashion. Um, I don't know, I can imagine none of us really like going to Ikea that much, but it also doesn't really work with the online shopping, so this can be a solution to that problem. Furniture, cars, uh, real estate viewings before you actually view it in person. Those are, I think, the, the real use cases in a, let's say, B2C environment of the metaverse. And it's all driven by, by technology, right? So we started with mixed reality, Pokemon Go, using your phone to have an overlay through your phone. It's not very immersive. Moving on to augmented reality. So this is what we would define as, for example, Google Glass, active overlays. And really where we're trying to go with the metaverse is virtual reality. So replacing the real world digitally, virtually, with experience there. It's fully immersive. Your visual sensation is fully in this virtual world. And the adoption of this technology and the advancement of this technology is what, what's going to cause adoption at scale in the metaverse. So um, there are a number of studies, for example, from McKinsey that say that we expect about $5 trillion in total value in the metaverse by 2030. Um, and we believe this is going to be due to technological improvement. We all know we like to overestimate what will happen in five years. We underestimate what happens in 15 years. Um, so this is really more geared towards that 10, 15-year horizon. So with all these opportunities and this, and this whole buzz about the metaverse, the question is how we can actually participate or how we could invest in the metaverse. And there's a couple options we have. Number one are stocks. So I think you've all seen some of these ETFs, iShares Metaverse ETF, Han ETF, uh, Franklin Templeton has one hours, et cetera, right? But they still have pretty low fund sizes. Um, do they really invest in the metaverse? Let's take a look. So here's the iShare, iShares ETF. And you can see companies like um, Activision, Electronic Arts, gaming, right? Meta platforms, so Facebook stock. How much upside is left in this, in this, in this stock? It's been on the market for a while. They're trying to kind of refocus. Um, but what about the risk associated with these investments? And then um, here's MasterCard and here's Visa. And we need to ask ourselves, well, what are they doing with the metaverse? Like, how big is their actual engagement in the metaverse? So stocks are pretty diluted option of investing in the metaverse with pretty low returns of investment to be expected. The next option is VC funds, which do have some advantages to them, but for the broader audience, it's a big ticket size. You can't really invest as a retail uh, investor. It's exclusive. They can be a liquid at times. So they also don't solve the problem for everybody. And then we have tokens. Now, 
pretty much everybody can buy a token online as long as you're decently tech savvy, let's say. Um, but it's pretty opaque trying to understand who's behind the token, what's being built. Uh, you kind of start to do some crypto picking, which usually doesn't end up well. Um, and it's, it's pretty complex. Um, but we think that that's where um, the, the return potential really is. Um, altcoins are what we regularly see performing pretty well. So what we propose and what we would like to talk about is the idea of a metaverse token index. So you're trying to reduce the complexity of investing into a set of metaverse tokens and reduce the, let's say, due diligence you have to do yourself up front because the beauty of an index is that it kind of evolves over time and new projects start to enter it as they rise in their market cap. Um, but while they still have some potential returns, let's say, left in them and haven't been on the stock market for 10 years, kind of completely fleshed out. So together with ITSA, we've identified current metaverse tokens that could be part of such an index. Um, you can see here something like Chili's. Um, they're very heavily focused on sports and sports entertainment. Decentraland is something most people think of when they hear the metaverse. So they've been focused on um, mainly companies. So JP Morgan, Adidas, et cetera, they're all setting up in Decentraland. And then we have the Sandbox, which is a 3D world focused on gaming and entertainment. Now, what's interesting is um, Chili's has a market cap of 700 million. Decentraland is at a billion dollars. The Sandbox is at 800 million. Um, if you remember, the biggest Metaverse ETF had 21 million AUM in it. So there are really big projects out here, but it's not really the, the masses aren't finding it through these ETFs, right? So they must be investing more directly. So together with ITSA for the classification and with adaptive technologies, we will, by the way, hear a presentation of later, um, we've decided to create or we want to create a sophisticated uh, index logic that is future-proof, that has the right kind of weighting mechanisms in it in order to allow you to easily um, invest in the metaverse. Now, of course, we need to show some returns, some backtesting, um, some, some graphs, but um, this is a comparison with Bitcoin, which is maybe not the right benchmark here, but it's just to see that um, in the token space is where you can find and expect to see uh, certain ret uh, good returns, also with high volatility. But we need to keep in mind that we're thinking about a long-term engagement here and not about short-term returns. So maybe this comparison is, is a nice one to look at, um, but maybe not the most meaningful in this context. Now, the way you would Im implement such a token in index is where I think it gets interesting. So we've seen the traditional way of um, kind of going through a calculation agent and then creating a, an exchange-traded product, for example, for, for a token basket. Um, but we would like to propose a different idea that could simplify the process significantly. significantly. So you start with a smart contract-based asset management protocol, right? So what happens now is that you're on Ethereum, you're buying a token, which has these underlyings. You're, you have in-kind redemption, so you can get the underlying tokens out of the product. It's available on decentralized exchanges. It can be listed on centralized crypto exchanges. It's associated with very low costs, which reflects in low fees. Um, and the smart contract purchases and sells the tokens automatically. But it would require a wallet and a DEX, asset, uh, a DEX access, which maybe is a bit too complex. So what you can do once you have this one token is you can build a certificate or a, a, a security financial product that invests in these underlying tokens, right? So now you have an ISIN, you have a traditional infrastructure, you have cash redemption, but you can buy it with whatever your uh, traditional brokerage account is. And the benefit is that now you're not trying to build a basket in this financial product itself where you're gonna have pretty high slippage fees, um, difficulties finding market makers and authorized participants for these tokens when you want to really list it on exchange. Instead, you're really just buying one ERC-20 token, which in itself reflects um, the index and the assets. So the way this could be implemented to, in the end, arrive at the traditional certificate is in four steps, which we see here. So phase one, of course, you need to have a classification, you need to have an index method. Um, then you can talk about calculation and distribution if you want to go um, through the, let's say, more traditional route. So you would talk to someone like VM Daten Service, get an ISIN for it, um, work with an index calculation agent to get a benchmark, a proper benchmark out there. Then um, we, we propose working with someone like IndexCoop, which is a smart contract based index protocol. They are most known for the DPI, which, uh, which is the uh, DeFi Pulse Index, which had about three to 400 million AUM at its peak last year or two years ago. Um, so they can do the asset management, a 
according to the weights they receive. And then in phase four, on top of this, you implement an exchange listed product in whatever form possible that buys these underlying tokens. And what we're doing is you're, you're essentially through phase three, removing a lot of friction that you would otherwise have with the uh, product in the end. So yeah, I think try to keep it short and sweet since there are some people still behind me. Um, I think now it's time maybe to introduce myself as well. So Maximilian Bruckner, I'm from, from 2026. We try to connect professional and now also to an extent retail investors with the optimal crypto investment products and we do that through white label, through advisory services and through this new index project that we've been developing, developing in particular also to allow people to participate in the metaverse growth in a more simple and direct way. Thank you very much. I'm of course open to any questions from the audience or Telegram if there is still a minute or two.